Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about Redfin's latest housing market update because there's some very big changes occurring in the U.S. housing market. It's been about a week and a half since I made a video, so I apologize for the uh, delay in getting this back to you guys. But I want to share what's going on regarding home prices, housing inventory, home sales, and much, much more. So according to Redfin, it says pending sales and home tours, in other words, agents showing houses that are for sale to their buyers, so pending sales and home tours remain fairly strong as mortgage rates rise to the highest levels since mid-summer and uncertainty around the election is picking up. So rates have been increasing um, steadily for about a month now, uh, the highest level since approximately July this year. Pending home sales, a measure of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers, buyers getting offers accepted. Pending home sales rose by 3.5% compared to 12 months ago during the four weeks ended October 20th, the biggest increase in three years, with the exception of the prior four week period when they rose by 3.7%. On a local level, pending sales are up in 35 of the 50 most populous US metros. This means that 70% of the 50 biggest cities in the United States, of course, um, are posting a gain in contracts being signed. In contrast, this also means that there's only 15 metros that are down year over year. So big picture, on a national level, where the biggest increase, or I should say the second biggest increase in three years, and also looking at the 50 biggest cities, 35 of them are up compared to the same time frame in 2023. Redfin also goes on to say the following. Demand is also holding up at early stages of the home buying process. Redfin's Home Buyer Demand Index, this is an index which measures the amount of real estate uh, tours and other home buying services that Redfin agents are doing. Uh, that was uh, uh, hit the highest level since May this year and is up by 3% year over year. Here's a big challenge for people looking to buy a house right now because of course, because rates have been increasing and of course we're seeing rising home prices as well, where we still have this you know, huge issue regarding housing affordability. Rising rates and stubbornly high home prices have pushed the median U.S. housing payment to $2,587 per month, the highest level since July this year, with the exception of the prior four-week period. Here's how they calculate that uh, payment of $2,587. They look at the median asking price, in other words, the middle number of um, the asking price on a national level, median asking prices of homes for sale, and also the weekly rate looking at Freddie Mac last week and you get about $2,600 per month. Now looking at um, some like very early indications of home buying demand, uh, these are mortgage purchase applications according to the MBA. Uh, they basically look at approximately 75% of all retail um, application numbers on a national level and uh, provide some data regarding how's that compared to uh, last week and also the same week one year ago. So actually applications for home loans to buy houses decreased by 5% last week, dropping near the lowest level in about one year. I'm guessing because of the increase in, uh, in mortgage rates, uh, we're seeing this decrease of application numbers. Whereas looking at uh, pending home sales, that is a four week rolling average over the previous 30 days, which can encompass some um, applications or home buyers getting their offers accepted when rates were much lower than, than they are right now. Speaking of mortgage rates, here is our Mortgage News Daily's website as of today, which is October 28th. They basically survey lenders across the country asking them, hey, what's your um, average rate for people looking to buy their first house? They have a FICA score of around 780. They're putting 20% down, et cetera, et cetera. Looking at the average rates, according to them, the average uh, 30-year fix is at 7%. We haven't been at 7% in quite some time. I believe this is actually a four-month high. Jumbo 7.1, FHA and VA loans is around 6.46 and 6.48%. Uh, Take a look at this. Here is a chart looking at uh, daily rates according to them um, over the past one year. So um, about what, a month and a half ago, we're looking at 6.11%. Now they've increased about 90 basis points to 7%. The last time rates have been this high according to them was all the way back until July 9th this year. So approximately a four month high regarding rates right now. Also one year ago though, we're still down though, because one year ago we're at 7.88%. 
So a decrease of 88 basis points from 12 months ago. All right, getting back to Redfin's update here. This actually covers the four weeks ended October 20th this year. This was posted by Redfin last week, late last week on Thursday, I believe. Uh, they basically look at weekly um, updates or they share weekly updates for 400 plus US metros and their weekly data goes back to 2015. So beware, if you hear record high or record low, their data only goes back to 2015 when looking at weekly updates from them. And of course, their data is subject to revision. So let's look at prices because we saw an uptick last week, which is highly unusual. We're at $385,200. That's up by 4.7% year over year, the biggest year over year increase since March this year. Asking prices um, at just under $400,000. That's the biggest increase in two years. Let's take a look at Redfin's data center regarding the median sale price. Again, this is a lag indicator what our housing market was like approximately one to two months ago when the home buyer got their offer accepted. So this is a lagging indicator, anything based on a close home sale. So the uh, line above is this year, of course, we're up by 5%. At this time last year, we're up by 3%. And in 2022, we're up by 6%. Look at 21 though, look at that, up by 13%. So we're up by 5%, which is much better than the, or much better in the eyes of a would-be home buyer uh, compared to the giant gains we saw in 2021, of course, 2020 as well. What is highly unusual though, looking at this year, is that over the past two weeks, home prices have increased, which is much different compared to years past, with the exception of 2021. The reason why home prices increased in the last half of 21, very, very unusual, was because back in August of 2021, rates uh, decreased to very close to all-time record lows, down to about 2.7%. And that reinvigorated or caused home buying demand increase in the last half of the year. Let's also have a look at the 50 most populous metros because of course there's some very big differences and also a big change compared to one month ago. So for example, this last uh, period, which again is the Forex ended October 20th, there's only three metros that are down compared to previous year. This is an improvement from one month ago because one month ago, there was actually eight metros that were down year over year. Now there's only three. Those three metros are Austin, Texas, down by 3.9, San Antonio, 3.1, and San Francisco is down by 0.9%. In contrast, the biggest gains is Milwaukee, Wisconsin, up by a whopping 12.8%. Then we have Fort Lauderdale, Florida, up by 11.7%. Nassau County, New York, up by 10.1%. Province, Rhode Island, up by 9.4%. And Chicago saw a gain of 9.3%. All right, let's change gears slightly here and talk about demand versus supply. So pending home sales compared to new listings, people listing their houses for sale, and active listings which is a total pool of houses actually for sale or house inventory. So pending sales actually increased by 3.5%. The biggest increase again in nearly three years with the exception of the prior period. Um, and uh, new listings rose by 2.2%. I haven't seen this uh, dynamic happening in quite some time because I've been reporting on the channel for what, what basically all year. Uh, the measure of contracts being signed, pending sales, um, uh, not increasing as much or going down compared to new supply in the market. So pending sales going down, new listings increasing. Now we're seeing just the opposite. Pending sales increase more than new supply in the market, which is causing active listings to actually go down. So new listings um, uh, posted the smallest increase in the year with the exception of the prior four week period, uh, or sorry, the four week period ending August 25th, um, but active listings rose by 15.2%. That was the smallest year of year increase since March this year. Let's first have a look at pending sales on Redfin's data center, up by 3.5%. Whereas before that, we were basically down year over year ever since really, let's go back all the way until we hit approximately here. Let's just say April through uh, September this year, we were down year over year. And now for the past one, two, three, four consecutive weeks, uh, we have more pending sales compared to last year, which is last year is the blue bar. The black bar is 22 and above here is 2021. New supply in the market though is up by 2.2%. Uh, 
So up compared to last year and 22, it looks like as well. Uh, but a measure of contracts being signed actually increased more than new supply in the market, which I would think, I haven't actually looked at this yet, <laughs> active listings is probably going down. And there you go, right there. A big decrease over the past two weeks right now. Uh, a gain of 15.2%, which by the way is a three-year high, at least during that same time frame. But it's basically been flat um, ever since really uh, July this year, which by the way, a gain of 15.2% is actually the smallest year of year gain since the four weeks ended March 31st this year. Back then we saw a 14% increase. So I'll say this again, if you guys wanna see housing market crash, how is that possibly gonna happen if inventory is flat for basically what, three, four months now? And we're seeing a increase of contracts being signed uh, right now as well. What I'm getting at is that if you guys want to see home prices decrease greatly, you want to see inventory absolutely spiking. Let's go back to inventory, which is right there. You would want to see what happened um, in 2022, where inventory basically doubled in less than uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, whereas this year it is increasing at a faster clip compared to uh, last year. But it's losing momentum ever since uh, July this year. It is all about the balance between supply and demand. And speaking of a balance between supply and demand, looking at pending home sales of the 50 biggest cities, those increase again in 35 of those 50. So pending home sales increase in 70% of the 50 biggest cities, and only 15 are down. So the biggest increases of pending sales is San Francisco up by 21.2%. Then we have Portland, Oregon up by 19.7, Seattle, San Jose, and Anaheim, California, all located in the West Coast. In contrast, the biggest decreases is Tampa, Florida. I imagine this is probably more impacted by the hurricane that hit that region um, than anything else, but down by 33.7%. Uh, then we have West Palm Beach, Florida down by 19.8, Fort Lauderdale, Florida down by 16.7, Miami, Florida, down by 14.5, and Orlando, Florida, down by 13.6. So that's the demand side. Let's have a look at the supply side. New supply hitting the market. Those decrease in nine metros. So 41 metros are reporting gains compared to 12 months ago. The biggest increase is San Jose, California, up by 17.8. Seattle, up by 17%, same for Phoenix. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland up by 16.3, and Anaheim, California saw a gain of new supply um, up by 15%. In contrast, Tampa, Florida makes sense that uh, new listings fell greatly. Who's going to be listing their house for sale when you have a hurricane, right? Uh, down by 40%. Then we have Atlanta, West Palm Beach, Florida, Orlando, Florida, and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In regards to the month supply, we're sitting at a 4.1 month supply which is at least a three or high during the same time frame. Um, also higher, of course, than last year. Last year is the orange bar. At this time last year, we're around 3.5 months. Now we're at 4.1 months. So more or less what we're seeing right now, ever since July, we're seeing a seasonal increase in the month supply uh, nationwide. And that should continue for the remainder of the year. Let's also talk about how fast or how slow houses are selling. That's days in the market. That's 40 days. One year ago, houses on average took about 33 days. Now it's at 40 days, which by the way, is at least a three or high during the same time frame. And again, just like the month supply, we are seeing a seasonal increase in the month supply, but still at elevated levels compared to the previous three years. And lastly, let's have a look at the average sale price to final list price ratio. That was at 98.8%, which means homes on average sold for 1.2 percentage points less than the seller's final list price. I've been making this video for years now. <laughs> Finally got this right here. I, I tend to take uh, many takes to say that. Anyways, so uh, that ratio is at 98.8%, uh, which is very close to the same time frame in 2022 at this time, but it's also very close to a three-year low as well. Because for example, back in 2021, which I know is like comparing apples to oranges because of rates, rates back then were around 3%, now rates around 7%, which is absolutely crazy, but uh, the big difference over the past couple of years. But back then, uh, because we had such low rates and of course uh, a lack of housing supply, uh, um, houses on average took about uh, or sold for uh, a half percentage point higher 
and the seller's asking price. Now they're selling for about 1.2 percentage points less than asking. And with that said, thank you so much for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe. Um, hope you uh, see you on the next video. Have an amazing day. I appreciate you guys so much. And thank you so much for your patience as, as well. I haven't made a video in about a week and a half uh, due to some travel and also a lot of other stuff going on. But uh, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, have an amazing day. And we'll see you next one.